Our next speaker is Barbara Fredrickson. She's the Keenan Distinguished Professor of Psychology at the University of North Carolina. Barb's groundbreaking research centers on positive emotions and is characterized by diverse methods that draw connections between the mind and body to inform human flourishing, health, and most recently, love. She's the author of a book titled Love 2.0, How Our Supreme Emotions Affect Everything We Feel, Think, Do, and Become. She'll explore this topic today in a talk titled Remaking Love. So what if everything you know about making love is wrong? You know, when I was pulling this talk together, I realized that the subtitle might well have been how you can make love all day long without getting tired or fired, okay? <laughs> Would you know how to do that? Uh, my message is that our typical ways of thinking about love are too limited. They don't serve us well. Now, if you knew me 20 years ago, and I knew a handful of you in the room did, uh, you'd find it amusing that I'm up here telling you about love. Uh, by my late 20s, I was pretty cynical about love, you know, having had my share of heartbreak. And, um, you know, that pair that cynicism with a career in science, and I was pretty much just living up here in my head. And that's around the time that I met my husband-to-be. And while he felt the connection between us, I was completely clueless. Um, he called me crusty. Uh, and uh, get this, when, when he would call me at work during the day just to chat, before we'd hang up, I would let him know just how many minutes uh, we had been on the phone with the not so subtle implication that he had just robbed me of that much intellectual time. So, you know, I was really lucky that he stuck around. Um, he even gave me my own theme song back then, which was The Grateful Dead's When Push Comes to Shove, You're Afraid of Love. So, uh, even though I have long studied positive emotions, I came to this research pretty clueless about love in particular. And at one level, I think we're all pretty clueless about love. Worldwide polls show that most people on this planet take love to be finding that one special person. You know, I find this sad because half of all adults, at least in the U.S., have yet to find that one special person or have since lost that one special person. Is there no love for the single among us? And it's Valentine's Day. What are we doing here? If you're... <laughs> If you're like me, you're hundreds or thousands of miles away from your sweetheart. You know, are we all SOL today? You know, simply out of love? <laughs> so I'm here to take love off this romantic pedestal and clear away the cupids and the cartoon hearts of the season and help you see and appreciate love from a different perspective, uh, from a scientific perspective. Now, I know even some of you in this room might be bristling at that, thinking, what a killjoy. I don't want my ideas about love mixing it up with science. Um, but what I can assure you that adding science to the mix need not take the sparkle out of love. Indeed, that's what can help you discover how to make love all day long. Now, to take you where the science is leading, I don't want you to be thinking about love abstractly, staying up here in your head. Um, or do I want you to be uh, equating love with loins and staying below the belt? You know, I'd like you to meet me in the middle, uh, meet me at your heart, okay? Go ahead, put your hand on your heart. Anybody, I have a few takers, yeah? Um, yours is not a cartoon heart. It's that reliable muscle beating away in your chest sending freshly oxygenated blood to wherever your body needs it. I want to help you appreciate love from your heart's perspective. The thing that we often forget about love is that it's an emotion. 
And the truth about emotions is they last, they're, they're fleeting. They last just a micro moment. Let's see. There we go, a micro moment later. You see micro moment? Um, it's that micro moment when you truly connect with another living being, whether it's uh, laughing with a friend or sharing uh, a, a hug with your neighbor with compassion or smiling at a baby. It doesn't even have to be your baby. It can be the baby on the plane. Now, we've heard this idea before. It's not completely new. I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do They're really saying I love you Okay. So, Louis Armstrong was calling out the, the warmth of our everyday connections as part of the wonders, one of the wonders of the world that, um, that uh, really is worth cherishing. And those wonders run even deeper still because when you really connect with someone, when you're really uh, sharing a moment with them, there's a, a beautifully choreographed dance unfolding between you as your smiles and gestures and postures come into sync and mirror one another. But, though, but there's part of that synchrony that you can't see because when you really connect with somebody, your, uh, your uh, heart rhythms come into sync. Your biochemistries come into sync. Even your neural firings come into sync. It's as if in that single moment, a positive emotion, a single positive emotion is rolling across two brains and bodies at once, creating a momentary resonance of good feeling and goodwill between you. And this idea of resonance is so strong, this back and forth mirroring that's going across two, two, the instruments of two bodies is so powerful that I call these connections, micro moments of positivity resonance. And what's more, the, the more you experience these micro moments of connection, of positivity resonance, the more it changes you, not just socially and psychologically, but physically. It makes you healthier. Now, I've become particularly fascinated with your vagus nerve. This is your 10th cranial nerve. It emerges from your brain stem to tether your brain to your heart. And one of its jobs is to calm your racing heart after a fright. But when your vagus nerve is functioning especially well, it also slows down your heart just a little bit each time you exhale, creating a healthy uh, rhythm to your heart rate. Now, what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. <laughs> You know, it radiates out, this healthy rhythm in your heart radiates out and affects your health more, more broadly. It reflects um, your body's capacity to regulate glucose, to regulate inflammation, as well as your heart rate. It establishes your biological capacity for connection as well. And scientists used to think that the functioning of your vagus nerve was pretty stable, kind of like your height once you're an adult. But what we've discovered is if you increase your daily experiences of, of connection or these micro moments of positivity resonance, your vagus nerve functioning improves. The very rhythms of your heart become stably more healthy. Now, if we go deeper into your uh, heart and take a tour through your bloodstream and zoom in on your white blood cells, we also see that your white blood cells register your experiences of connection. Uh, a new focus for my research lab is to look at changes in gene expression within the immune system. And what we're discovering is that your, uh, uh, if you increase your experiences of micro moments of connection, there's a systematic shift in gene expression within your immune system, which is a downregulation of pro-inflammatory genes, coupled with an upregulation of antiviral genes. And this combination sets, you up, sets your body up to better defend itself against a, a wide range of infectious and chronic illnesses. So these micro moments of connection these are health behaviors, every bit as important as eating your vegetables or staying physically active while you're at a conference. Now, uh, but how much more enjoyable is connecting than some of these other health behaviors that we feel like we have to force ourselves to do? 
And this isn't just about your health, because when you really connect with someone, uh, it's like your heart and your immune system is get it, getting a miniature tune-up, but so is the other person's. So you are wired to connect, and your vagus nerve and your immune system are part of that wiring. And, but I don't want you to be thinking about this as sort of like mechanical wiring that stays the same season to season. This is living tissue, living cells. They change season to season in step with your habits. The more you connect, the more you lower your odds of having a heart attack and increase your odds of living a long, healthy, and happy life. Now, these, this is um, evidence that, that you know, this, the data give me goosebumps because I feel like we've hardly given these micro moments their due. When we say, uh, oh, we really clicked or we had a good rapport, we're subtly suggesting that the goodness of our connection is somehow optional. Yet these data suggest that uh, these are biological imperatives, this connection. They give you life in the same way that the right combination of water, soil, and sunlight gives life to plants. So um, this is the evidence that has pushed me to elevate these micro moments of connection and put them on that revered pedestal that we call love. Love isn't just that rare uh, lightning bolt experience that connects you to your soulmate. No less life changing, it's also that simple genuine smile that you can share with anyone all day long. Now this isn't just a ivory tower exercise of remapping definitions. Um, this has been a, a huge wake-up call for me personally because I now, I, it helps me see that every interaction that I have is an opportunity. But if I'm going to step into that opportunity, I need to step out of my head and away from my keyboard and take some risks and, and be open and be vulnerable. Uh, but what I found is the payoff for doing that is huge. Um, all day long, I can give and receive energy and health whether I'm you know, thanking the couple who sat next to us at dinner last night and went out of their way to do Sonia and I a favor, or playing cards with my colleagues over lunch. I see Sarah back there. <laughs> and, uh, uh, or you know, enjoying my two cats with my two kids. You know, and now I no longer, I, I should share with you, I no longer take those minutes in the day that I, on the work day that I connect with my husband as like mere distractions from my intellectual work. But you know, there, I now see them as part of the magic that keeps our bond strong and our bodies healthy. Now, the, the beauty of this research is that it not only illuminates these remarkable physical effects of these micro moments of connection, it also points the way towards how we can seed more of such connection in our lives. Okay, so one way to do this is to practice what we preach to our research participants, and that is loving kindness meditation. This is the base of much of my work. Now, there's a lot of richness to loving kindness meditation, and I can't do justice to it here, but just as a, a taste of it, you know, the drumbeat of loving kindness meditation is a set of heartfelt wishes that you offer to specific others, and those wishes are, may you feel safe, may you feel happy, may you feel healthy, and may you live with ease. Now, um, what we found in the research is that if you dedicate just an hour of your week, that's um, 15 to 20 minutes, three to four times a week, to learning this practice, that's all it takes for your vagus nerve and your white blood cells to register that change in your behavior. And uh, fortunately, there's been loads written about loving kindness meditation. There's also quite a bit on the web, just uh, mouse clicks away for you to learn more at many different websites, this one included. Now, I know that meditation is not for everybody. It's not everybody's cup of tea. So I want to share with you another uh, practice that takes just a minute a day that can also unlock some of these same uh, physical changes. And this is a, a practice of savoring love. And think of it as um, at the end of the day, 
uh, think of your three most significant interactions and ask yourself, how close did I feel to the people I was with today? How in tuned? And we found when people ask themselves these sim simple questions at the end of the day for uh, four or five weeks, their positive emotions increase and their vagus nerve functioning improves. So what I find particularly poignant about research in this area is that we now know that the causal arrow runs in both directions, that your daily experiences of connection improve your physical health but your physical health also sets up your capacity for connection. Your biological capacity to connect obeys the law of use it or lose it. So choose it. Choose love. Stop waiting for the Cupid's arrow to choose you. Go ahead and choose love. Choose to connect with the people in your midst day to day, uh, face to face, heart to heart, and smile to smile. The, new, the science here is calling us to wake up to the power of these micro moments of connection and to take them more fully to heart. So uh, choose love. Opportunities for it abound. Thank you. Love the one you